How many of you guys are going to be at the hackathon tomorrow? Uh, all of these awesome. Are very flexible, right? How many of you guys think you're going to win? Everyone's hand should be up. Come on. <laughs> all right. So whenever I get the okay here. Yes. It's a little high level, but you know, meaning it. Uh, it's a little high level, so the code stuff's going to be uh, relatively minor. So it is an intro to the iOS class. Just keep that in mind. I know probably. You know, a lot of us want to dive into the, you know, React and all that. But yeah. Why, while we are still waiting, so how likely do you think that Andy is Sure. Are we live now? Yes. Oh, OK. Yes. So um, ask me in a second then. Uh, or what, what was it? Yeah, the second question was, uh, how likely do you think that uh, Android will go through with Swift and actually adopt it? Is rumors say? Very unlikely. Okay. I, in my opinion, I mean, they love Java. So yeah, I say they'd they, probably they stick with it. They had a problem with uh, Sun from uh, what I remember about licensing. Them. Really? So they were. Oh, I, but they might just move to C++ then, yeah. you okay. know? So. so, so um, so, yeah, but you can actually make iOS apps, at least you used to be able to in C++ a few years ago. In 2015, I know you used to. I don't know if you can now. But yeah, for iPhone 7. Well, so, uh, hi. Uh, I am here for Make School. My name is Brandon. Uh, I will be teaching an iOS beginner's workshop for you guys. Um, who are we? A little bit about us before we begin. Uh, our founder is in the middle holding the make. His name is Jeremy. And our co-founder is Ashu, sort of in the middle there. So we are a startup based in Silicon Valley, um, well, based in San Francisco, I should say. Uh, we focus on computer science education. So this iOS workshop that I'm presenting to you is basically our whole business model. We have summer academies here in New York, as well as uh, Dallas, um, San Francisco, Austin, uh, either Dallas or Austin, Texas, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, Hong Kong, and I believe one other city that is escaping me right now. But uh, I will be talking a little later about our summer academy in New York, where we uh, teach this as a whole eight-week course. Uh, we also have a product college in San Francisco, which is a two-year sort of college alternative. Uh, it is a non-accredited two-year program, which will basically, uh, it's like attending a boot camp every day for two years. You are, it's very vigorous, and you, if you don't come out, you know, an amazing software developer, it's very unlikely. So, yeah, uh, we have been in this space now for a few years. Our first summer academy was in 2014, and it, we have since then grown exponentially over the years. Uh, I'm actually an alum as well. I attended the program in 2015. Uh, so, yeah, if there are any more questions about that later or, uh, during the presentation, well, maybe not during the presentation, but you know, later, uh, then I'll feel free to add, uh, I'd love to answer them. So, this is going to be the fi finished product of what we're gonna be making today. Um, obviously, it has to have our logo on it. <laughs> um, the simulator may be a little large on the screen here. Um, so for those of you who do have Xcode, uh, this is sort of a work-along workshop. For those of you who don't, feel free to look on Feel free to just take it as a lecture. Um, you still will have access to this tutorial online, which I'll get you guys set up with in a second. So I'm going to have to sort of scroll here. But this is the basic uh, gist of what this is going to look like here. Um, you'll be able to type in. Uh, you go to a restaurant. You have a $20 bill. And you want to see what a $15 tip is, and it'll tell you. Maybe it's a little bit more complicated than that, right? Uh, you'll have an $18 tip, an uh, 18% tip, and a 20% tip. Pretty standard, you know, nothing too advanced, but it's basically just to get you guys familiar with Xcode, uh, hit the ground running, how to connect your code, and get things to show up on the phone. It would look a lot more attractive if the simulator was correctly proportioned, but I apologize for that. So, um, hopefully everyone, yes, oh, hopefully, sorry corner of my eye. Hopefully everyone who has a Mac has Xcode uh, installed. Do you have Xcode 8.1 or 8.2? Because they just they just released 8.2, so you updated. I'm actually on 8.1, so if there are any differences, if you have any questions, I can come over and see if there's something that broke 
in the latest build or something, or something that's a little bit different. Um, but do feel free to go on. I apologize. Our, our curriculum, our, tu our tutorial currently is an 8.1. So, yeah, well, it's a little further than that, a little fur further behind. But if there are any loose ends, I'll try to tie them up. OK? So uh, please, if you may, uh, go on to our homepage website, makeschool.com. And uh, when you're there, I'll continue. Uh, it's not going to be too difficult. You'll just go to our online courses and uh, the tutorials. So online courses, tutorials, when you go there, well, we should have the Getting Started with Swift 3 and Xcode 8 tutorial. We're going to be following along this as a workshop today. Uh, I will be doing everything uh, myself above. You know, on the board, you can look onto that or do it on your own if you have any problems. Do feel free to let me know. It is online courses and tutorials. The Getting Started with Xcode. And actually, I want to make sure that if it's not the full pages, Oh, I'm sorry, tip calculator. Right, I'm getting started with Xcode. The tip calculator, uh, but again, it is online tutorials on the website. If you can't see that for some reason, let me know. Um, um, yes and no. Immediate answer, no. If you have a Hackintosh, which is technically illegal, yes. Um, but Xcode does not run on Windows machines. I've heard, I've heard tell that it might be bootable on Linux, but I'm not entirely sure. I haven't tried it myself. So. Is everybody here for the most part? Good? All right. So, way to continue. Uh, for those of you, I'll be working along as well. Um, when you open X. Yeah, sorry. I'll try to project like for you guys a little more. Um, inside of Xcode, we're going to make a new uh, project. For you guys, when you first open Xcode, it'll ask you what you want to do. If in the top, you can just go new project. You can't really see, but it would be file new project on the top left. And you're, we're going to want a single view application. Now, a single view application is one of the simplest things you can do, uh, make in a mobile application. It only, you're working with one view controller. You're not switching around. It's very basic. You know what you want. It's all going to be on the same screen, you know, and that's what we're going to be working with right now. You can make games. Uh, you can have a master uh, application. In games, they have their own little kit uh, for 3D and 2D animation. Uh, of course, you guys know that you can use Unity for that as well. So we're going to continue with a single view application. So the product name, uh, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, the name that we suggest is Tip Pro, but you can name it whatever you want. Since I already have a Tip Pro, I'm just gonna kind of put some numbers here. The uh, organization name, you don't have to worry about. You don't work for an organization right now for this project. Um, the organization identifier, you can just put it make, as Make School. That way you'll be able to find it in your files easy. The language is gonna be Swift. Uh, it's Swift by default, but if it is Objective-C, please make sure to switch it to Swift. And the device we're going to uh, develop for is the iPhone. We don't want to do universal right now because that's going to take into consideration a couple of things for the iPad and for other devices that we don't want to worry about necessarily for this workshop. That's out of the scope of this workshop. And if you attend the Summer Academy or any uh, of our other location academies, either here in New York or elsewhere, then you'll learn how to do things universally. We're not just going to you know, pigeonhole you into one thing. You make sure that all three of these boxes, core data and the unit testing for both are unchecked. We are not going to be using core data and we're not going to be using unit tests. Obviously, there, it is a good uh, practice to do so. Core data is useful for a lot of um, applications 
The unit tests obviously are for uh, quality assurance and testing your app to make sure so that you don't have to go tap, tap, tap through everything. You've got a bunch of test cases that'll run, uh, which is part of S uh, Xcode itself, and it'll tell you if there are errors. So once you're done with this, just continue forward and you know find your file uh, file location where you want to save it. You know it's up to you. I'm just just going to put it on my desktop so I can delete it. So here, oops, <laughs> here is the Xcode layout. How many how many people here have used other SD uh, other IDEs for other kinds of development? Adam. Adam? What, what, well, <laughs> is it for all languages or for, yeah. for specific purpose? OK. Anybody else use an ID for anything before? Anything specific? Hmm. Oracle. OK, yeah. So this would be Apple's IDE for mobile development. On the left-hand side, you have your navigator bar. Obviously, you can go through all your files like that. In the middle, you have uh, pretty much your workspace. On the bottom, you have your console. So if you need to print anything into the console, it's going to appear in the bottom right. Also, any errors, because uh, you know, no code is error-free, usually will be on the bottom, and it'll tell you what the errors are. On the right side, you have your editor's panel. On the top right up here, these little boxes, you can choose to close these layouts and open them as you please, depending on how you want your workspace. So we're going to move on. This app delegate.swift, we're not going to worry about right now. The delegates and delegation is something that we'll go further into in the Summer Academy. But uh, for our purposes, we're not going to use it. It's beyond the scope of this. But delegates are just a, uh, make it easier for the applications and the classes to talk to each other. Um, you'll, you, you know, we'll go more deeper into that if you deeper into that if you join the summer academy. The view controller .swift is where we're going to be putting all our code for this lecture. The code is going to be sort of at the end because there's a lot that I have to go through for the IDE itself. And main .storyboard is where the magic happens for our UI right now. So what you can see here is just a blank iPhone screen. You've got. Uh, just the battery showing and some, you know, the view controller layout. It's very blank right now, and we're going to be fixing that. So, uh, for those of you that are following along the tutorial, I believe we are a little farther through right now. We've created everything. I just want to make sure that I'm doing it in the order, right? And, and it, all this information is in the tutorials. If I've said something too fast, or if you can't understand me, or you want to look at it later, you have access to this, of course to look at later if you uh, want clarification on something. So in our app delegate for now, just so that you know and can see, in the application here, inside, we're just going to do the staple print. It's just like the print statement in Python. And we're going to say, hello world. Supposed to be hello make school, but you know. You'll see the hello world come down on the bottom right in the console. It's not actually going to display on the screen of the device. Uh, for that reason, you can use printing for debugging. Obviously, if you need to print your values before they're going, if your if your uh, app is crashing before the values are displayed, the console is a great great place to put your values, just so that you know. You can oh, it's the iPhone 7 Plus. It's going to default to the most recent device that Apple has, which is 7 Plus. And I'll show you how to change that in a sec. But down here in the console, you can see it says hello world, right? So moving on from that, uh, right here where it says iPhone 7 Plus, if you select this, it gives you a lot of the devices that you can select. It does not go any farther back uh, than two generations. So I remember when I was developing, I was doing a lot of my testing on iPhone 4S's because people still had them. And people do still have them, but Apple likes to uh, move forward. They don't like to look back. They constantly look forward. So they only go back two generations. Any device that they feel can run their current iOS build, they keep. But once the I uh, iPhone 8 comes out, the 5 will probably be defunct, and so on and so forth. So we're going to switch this to iPhone 7 just because on your machines, it, it'll look a little cleaner. It'll be a little smaller. 
uh, it's still going to look a little bit strange up here. So moving right along, I've shown you how to switch interface uh, layouts if you need to. Um, in the storyboard, we're going to add our first part of the UI. So down here on the bottom right, you have a bunch of objects that you can add onto the screen. In basic object-oriented programming, uh, all of these will, ha will be an object with their own uh, member functions. They will have their own classes. And you can override these classes to give them uh, custom functions as well. So you know, don't worry about that. But what we're going to look for is a label, which is right here. And we just drag it onto the screen. Just, you can put it in the middle, because we're going to be resizing it uh, pragmatically rather than just dragging it around. Why, why should we resize it pragmatically instead of dragging it? Uh, does anybody have an idea on that? If I just. Right, so what she said is, uh, for those watching, is when you see it on the phone, it might, be, it might look a little different than it does on the view controller. And that's correct. Um, it's not necessarily correct for, let's say, an iPhone 7 because they designed the workspace for the phone that's the most current. You can view it down here as other phones and iPads and everything. And it's very difficult as a developer to drag things into a place where it looks perfect on every device. You know, Unless you're developing everything in the middle, it's difficult. So what we do to solve that is we're going to make it so that these, uh, just like in any web development, any uh, responsive web development, they will reposition themselves based on the origin of the screen size itself. So it looks fine on any device. So in this label, we're going to come to the top right in the editor and show the attributes. Uh, attributes, And you can change the value to say tip calculator. This is going to be our title. Now, something you'll notice immediately is that it doesn't resize to fit the text. And that's OK. We're going to be fixing that. But again, I urge you not to just drag it out and, sit and resize it, because that'll work. But it won't, um, it won't be as responsive for other devices. So we're going to add our label. We're going to change the label's text. This is a video that we normally have students play when they're going through this tutorial. I'm going to skip it, and I'm just going to give you the overview. Basically. It has a lot to do with what I just said. The layout on one phone is not necessarily the layout on another. When you're, especially with Apple devices that have a bunch of shapes and sizes, they'll release the phone in this size, and then they'll release the phone uh, and smaller and then bigger for whatever reason. And then they'll release one even bigger. And then the new one will come out, and it's smaller than the last one. I don't know. They like to do their own thing. Um, and we, as developers, need to take that into consideration. Because everybody has their own taste. Everybody has their own style. Nobody's going to have the same device. So uh, keeping this in mind, we're going to be changing a few of the values uh, with respect to the view of this. Now, here's where things get interesting and why Xcode can be very fancy. Select your label, hold right click or command click, and drag. Well, you're going to see this line. This will allow you to uh, pick the parent of this object, and it's going to give you some objects to do, uh, some options to do with uh, respect to your parent. So here, I'm just going to set its equal width as the parent. So as you can see, it's letting you know that the width of the screen is going to become the width of the label. Sure. Well, you drag, you right-click and drag, and in this menu here. You're going to select equal widths, right? Now, we're going to hold Option. <laughs> Xcode is very weird. We're going to hold Option, which is going to change this menu now with a couple of extra selections. And as you're holding Option, you're going to select this top spaced container margin. It's going to then pin it to the top. So select that. And now you can see that it's letting you know it's going to pin it to the top. None of these changes have actually happened in the view yet, so we're going to continue. We're going to drag one more time, and we're going to center horizontally in the container. OK. And now a couple of the changes have been made. So 
we can see now that it's centered, the position has changed and now its width is respect to the parent. So it's exactly the width of our phone. If you run this on any phone, it's going to be the width of that phone. This second line is the offset from the top. It's pinned to the top, but it still has an offset because of where it was originally. Does that make sense? So where we dragged it is just where it is. And even though we pin it to the top, it starts with that original offset of where we put it. We can delete this or essentially change this to zero. Double click the second line. It's going to be a little difficult if you have poor cursor control, but as you know, computer scientists, we should be able to point and click. Um, double click on the second line, and you're going to set the 323 value to zero. And when you set that to zero and press enter, it'll hop to the top. Is that a little confusing? Does anybody have any questions? iOS. Yes. Because um, you seem curious. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're going to select our tip calculator now, our label. And down on the bottom right, you've got these little selections. One of them kind of looks like a, a vehicle from Star Wars. So we're going to select that one. Yes. Sure. I'm going to, I'll undo. Uh, this part or one further back? This. Sure. So we've pinned it to the top and we've set it as an equal width to the parent, which is the uh, phone, the, con the view controller on the phone, I should say. So we would right click and drag to select the parent and hold option and top space to container margin, that second option there is what you would select. If it's different on Xcode 2, 8.2, please let me know because that's something I need to know for further. Wait, I'm just trying to like right click and drag. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I see. Um, not very easy on certain Mac machines because of the way they make the pads, but. Um, so is it control and drag, basically? Uh, control click and drag or right click and drag. Whichever, however the configuration is on your computer, that's uh, the one you should use. Were you able to get the equal widths earlier as well? Um, drag and then let go. Yes. So when you let go, you'll see the menu. You click equal widths, then you drag it again, hold option. And I'm going to be clicking option. You can see they toggle. So if I hold option, this is what I see. If I let go, they toggle. Xcode is very, they like to be very fancy with their uh, IDE performance. It sometimes is very helpful, other times is very confusing. So to keep track of these things, obviously you get used to them, but it, it can be difficult. When you click option. You hold option. And then you hit top space to container margin, that'll pin it to the top. So when we pin it to the top, we right click and drag again, and we want to center it horizontally in the container. That will update the width that we changed before. And there's still a couple of you know, issues, and we're going to go through that. So this second line is the offset from the pin. So it's pinned to the top, but it still has an offset from the top. So we need to get rid of that offset. In the second line here, we double click it, and it tells us what that offset is. It's 323 pixels from the top of the offset. We want that to be zero because we want it at the very top. So we change that to zero pixels and it'll jump up to the top. Uh, we can select it again because in the tutorial, in the curriculum you guys have, they were using 8.0. Uh, in 8.1, they changed the centering to be uh, the alignment of the text to be in a different attribute field. So. You have to go to the next uh, segment, the show identity inspector segment, and you will be able to change the, um, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, it was right in front of my face. You just switch it to centered as if you were on Microsoft Word. So in the uh, curriculum, it auto centers, but it doesn't do that anymore. 
so we need to center it using this. Are you still uh, confused with something or trying to get it to work? Um, margining and getting the offset to next code uh, can be a little bit of a pain, but once you get everything set up, it'll work just fine on most devices. Pretty much all, yeah. Yeah, so I will, the second blue line to the right, you see how there's two? The second one, you highlight it, double click, and it'll show you all the offsetting. And the offset that's 323, you uh, will change that to zero. And when you change to zero and press enter, it'll jump to the top. You don't, do you? Does anybody? May I see? Because I am on 8.1 if you're on 8.2 and there is no second line. Okay, you're just going to have to go into the next segment and the offset is in. So the offset is going to be also in this part of the menu. In this ruler, it seems, in, X point, in Xcode 8.2. There's no change on my screen, but there's going to have a Y value. And if I could just do it on your screen to make sure that that's uh, what it is, I change that to zero. Yeah. So there's going to be a Y value that, a Y coordinate value that you will change to zero instead. This is a difference between the curriculum and the current bill that was released, I think, just last week. So, yeah. This is uh, one of the creeds of. I iOS development is you have to keep up with Apple. They're constantly changing and breaking things, um, which can be a pain, but you have to stay current, right? Were you able to get it um, aligned properly, or are you not really following along? Xcode? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, you need a Mac OS Sierra. I had Yosemite a few weeks ago. And um, I didn't even want to touch El Capitan. And then when I needed to you know, start going into Swift 3, because I was using Swift 1, um, I needed to update. So yeah. I see. Well, then just follow along with us. Uh, understand that it's a little bit different on now on X point, Xcode 8.2 than it is here. Um, and I'll try to work through that as best possible. Please let me know. 8.3? Are you sure? 8.3.2. Oh, I have 8.3.1. That's what I was getting it confused with. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, please let me know as those changes happen. Uh, it is a little bit different on the current build than on the build I'm using, and I will correct that as we go. Now, in the, attribu in the attributes here, if you're up to this point, uh, selecting tip calculator, my apologies. Oh, it is there. I, was I had something else selected. So the Y value is going to be instead in this segment, and you can just change that to zero instead. And my X is negative. Uh, I'll leave that there. So in the regular, in the middle of the attributes that we have been using, there is a center that you can use just like Microsoft Word. It'll center the text inside of the label, uh, which is neat and good because that's what we want it to be. You know, we're not. We, Centering is, is always the best way to align things, in my opinion, but that's probably a terrible opinion. So, down in the bottom right, hopefully this hasn't changed, there's going to be an Add New Constraints button. It's the Star Wars uh, battleship things. I don't really know. Um, I don't know what it's actually called. Something, yeah. You click on that, and you're going to get a whole bunch of margining options. So. We're going to be jumping into these a little bit more as we go. But for right now, we're going to change the height of this label. We're going to select the height, and we're going to change it to 85. And what that's going to do is it's going to bulk, uh, sort of meet up our label so that it's bigger, takes up more space. That way, we don't have to drag it down and center the text any further. We can just change the height, like on, a say, a web developing language, and it should be fine. So, moving forward, there used to be, in fact, in the uh, curriculum you can see here, it's 
even more out of date. There used to be an update frames button that you had to select, but yeah. So moving along, we want to add more elements. So we're going to add a bunch of more labels. So drag another label. You can roughly position them here because we're going to do, be doing the same approach to uh, positioning them later on. But add a label and then a text field next to the label. Now it's going to show you these do dotted lines and it'll sort of uh, uh, keep things centered with each other or keep things parallel to each other for the most part. Um, we want the text field obviously so that we can uh, write in what our bill was. This is where we're going to give our initial input, if you will. For a lot of apps, uh, the input is just the touch, uh, but for other ones like uh, Yelp or anywhere that you're finding places, the input usually comes from a text field. And so it's very really easy to plug that into code and then manipulate that as you need it. So once you have these two, you, you don't need to drag anything else anymore because you can highlight both of them. Hold Option, drag down, and it'll immediately copy it. So we're going to hold Option and drag down four, uh, three times until we have four of these. And Oh yes, have a good day. Sorry you couldn't stay for the whole thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're gonna drag it down until we have four. You're gonna notice that it's not exactly the same as what we want it to be. That's okay. We're gonna delete this. It was a uh, third, uh, second text field. And we're gonna drag in a segmented control instead. The reason I copied down everything was because it was easier and then because we're only changing one field. So are you having trouble with uh, copying that down? Or um, you know, you feel free to like commune to one table if you guys want, since there's not that many people here. That way you might be able to hear me easier. It's up, it's up to you. <laughs> um, so yeah, how are you guys going with this? We got this roughly. We're going to change it so you don't have to worry about It's not exactly here. Don't worry. So we've jagged our labels. We've copied it. So the tutorial would want us to preview it. I assume when you press play on the top left, you'll probably be able to guess what it's going to look like. But when you press play on the top left, it'll open the iPhone simulator. And it will take a little bit to load. And once it loads, it'll just show you the UI that you have now. Um, so here, it shows the UI that I have. These are auto uh, selectable. The objects that you have here that you drag from the object screen have their own properties already. They have their own cl class. They have their own member functions. So the segmented control is automatically selectable because that's just one of its uh, attributes, as well as the text fields. You can already type into them and everything. You don't need to uh, mess with that any further. The neat thing about the, IO, uh, the iPhone simulator is if you press the home screen, whoops, I locked it. Uh, press the home screen. How do you unlock it? Okay. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know how to unlock an iPhone. Well, what I was going to show you is that the simulator is a fully functioning phone. You can go on Safari with it, and if you have certain plugins, you are even able to make calls with it. The simulator is very helpful, but it, there are some limitations to it. There are certain gestures you, can, you cannot do. You cannot use the accelerometer. Uh, like detecting motion controls. Uh, a few years ago, that was impossible. Uh, now, I think it's pretty much the same. I mean, if you have a very specific motion that you want to detect, you're not going to be able to do that in the simulator. Later on, you'll, in the tutorials, it shows you how to connect your application to your phone for free. A little bit of trivia, uh, Apple didn't used to let you do that for free. Um, you, need to, you needed to used to have a developer account, which costs $100 a year before you could 
uh, put a locally hosted, a, a local uh, application on your phone. Uh, and we all know that with Android, you can just download the APK online and you know use an app even that way. So, continuing, we've added our segmented control. So, the right clicking and dragging and uh, setting attributes based on parents is not only uh, available in the view, but it's also available in the navigator of the view. So what we're going to do is we're going to select now. Let me just make sure. I just want to make sure that I'm uh, doing these in the right order. I've done this so many times that I, I sometimes jump ahead, and I just want to make sure I'm not skipping anything. Oh, I see. OK. So we're going to hold Shift and select all three of our text fields, uh, just like you would in any directory. And on the bottom right here, we're going to uh, go to our constraints, and we're going to add a, a, a set width. It's pretty fine already as default, but we don't want the width to change. We want it to be uh, static, just no matter what somebody puts in this. So we're going to change the width to 85. And they're all going to resize. And then we'll select the segmented selector, and we will change the width to 125. Now, it's not very different from what the values were already, but these values have been pre-selected to be uh, pre-calculated in the tutorials to be the best for the view. Normally, you would probably test things out to see what fits best, and then stick with something when you like it. Um, since I'm not here to dictate good UI to you just yet. Of course, in the Summer Academy, they do go over UI design and uh, principles of how uh, the psychology of how you would want to place your app for people uh, to get people to select on the things that you want them to select. Like, do you want people to sign up? You probably would want it to have it uh, in this contracting color, in this position, because this is where people normally look, et cetera, et cetera. So now that we have our fixed widths, um, we will move on. And we're going to add some stack views. Now, how many of us know what a stack is from regular computer science? Uh, how, many know, how many of us know what a stack is from regular computer science? Like data structure. Right. So uh, it's a data structure. I'll just go over it for briefly on the board. Um, and this isn't particularly important to what I'm going to show you, but I'm a geek. So, um, you know, it's, it's just a basic data structure. As you said, things come in from the back. They pop from the front. Also, uh, there are queues, priority queues, different types of stacking, uh, linked lists, doubly linked lists, et cetera, et cetera. Um, ev most computer scientists would be able to tell you that everything I just said there is technically correct and incorrect, because the data structure is very unique to the person who designed it. They you designed it to do what you needed to do. Here, we're going to stack things together so that they are technically um, counted within the same uh, object or same data structure. They have, the, they have a same parent. Now, to do that, we're going to highlight the first two options, the first label and text field. And we're going to click on this button down here. It says embed in stack. It's two away from the one we, no we used a second ago. So this is the constraints one that we used, and it's two away. It's the embed in stack. It kind of looks like a download button, like you're trying to download something. When you click on that, it's going to kind of mess up the view a bit. But don't worry. These two are now stacked on top of each other. They were given a parent that will count them as, you know, uh, when you use the parent, it will 
change the children because we want to be able now to move everything pragmatically the same way that we were moving the top label. Uh, this is going to seem like a waste and seem like we're just sort of preparing for a storm when there is no storm, but we want to make sure that no matter where this loads in, it's going to load in correctly, it's going to be spaced correctly, and it's going to be viewed, uh, be able to be viewed the same way. Now it's not going to work on iPod, on iPads, because we are only developing on the iPhone right now. But eventually, these constraints, uh, you'll have to, if you want it to be used on the iPad, because not everyone does, you'd have to think about more uh, of the UI as it would be stretched out a bit. So we're gonna do that for all of these. We're gonna create stacks for all four of these. And they're all gonna squish together a bit, and that's gonna be fine. Because we're gonna be fixing that later. Uh, we should add a button now as well. On the bottom right, if you scroll a little bit, you found the button. Just sort of center it there. We're gonna fix that later as well. Now this button, that's gonna be the calculate, right? We're gonna use that to take our inputs, change our inputs, and get, give an output, right? So now that we have the four stacks, we're going to highlight everything and create one master stack, a super stack. So now it's squished everything together even further. But now these are all, these all have the same parent and they're proportioned based on the parent's um, position. So they're going to basically, as high level as I can put it, they're going to move around uh, in this, uh, <laughs> to be spaced correctly on every phone that you try to run them on. It looks ugly right now, but it's not gonna look ugly in a bit. So if you, if you want to mess around with that, in the navigator, you can select the master stack, which would allow you to drag the whole thing around as if it were one object, since they're all part of the same thing, uh, the same parent. So moving on, uh, we've already created our stacks. Uh, we've created our super stack. So we're going to organize this. So here's the part where you're probably uh, wondering when we were going to do. We're going to change the values now of all of our labels. Now, one thing to understand about the labels is when you change the value of a label, it will automatically uh, change the name of that label if the name has not already been set to the value of the label. So if it's just label and you add a value, that becomes the name of the label. Unless you name the label, you know, elsewhere. So, first label is going to be, and I always forget these, bill amount, uh, bill amount. With a colon. Second one is gonna be tax. Third is gonna be tax amount. And the last one is going to be total. You, you can name these if you want to say tax amount and total amount. Name them to your discretion. These are just suggested values uh, based on the curriculum. The button will do the same. We'll check, change the text to say calculate. So with our segmented view, we are going to select it, and in the top right, you'll see the number of segments. We're going to change this from two to three. We're going to double click on each of the segments and change their values. So the first one is going to be 15%, the second one is going to be 18%, and the last one, now don't be scared when it you know, has that odd offset while typing, it's gonna look just fine when you so, uh, type it in. And we'll change that to 20%. Now that we have the stack views, we can get fancy. So 
we, well, how far along are you guys so that I don't move too far ahead? <laughs> so, you want to be a mobile developer now? <laughs> oh, so how, I'm interested in that job title actually. How, um, how often in your job do you touch code to, uh, is it mostly designing on uh, on like storyboards and papers or? Well, as a UX designer, you'll know what good and bad UX is. If not now, then eventually, I hope. Uh, and certainly having a foundation, this would allow you to make your own amazing user experience. I think, I think that's what it is, just having a foundation so that when you're trying to create your own code, you can do that mm -hmm. well. Like me. So, uh, <laughs> right. Right, that's not possible, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, any, any project management, any QA engineering, that's my day job. Um, any software engineering, well obviously software engineering. Any job where you interact with a software engineer, you want to at least know part of what their day-to-day -day is so that you're not saying, yeah, we want to make uh, shoes that will rocket you to the moon and you guys have three weeks to do it. You know, You don't want to give people tasks that are ridiculously out of scope. You don't want to say things without understanding the system that you're even working on. Uh, our systems are built in Scala. Um, yeah, very unique, right? Uh, part of that is to make sure that our uh, stack is as secretive as possible, but also because Scala is both functional and object-oriented, so we are able to do a lot uh, very powerfully and very quickly. Maybe not quickly, uh, on the compilation level, um, because it, it compiles on the Java, uh, on Java, and then the Java virtual machine, and then Scala. So uh, on my machine, it takes like 30 seconds to compile Hello World, but all that ridiculous overhead is worth it for at least what we're doing. Um, so do you have a computer science background then? You don't. So the coding is going to be very fun when we get to it then. But we have 10 minutes, and I hope there's not anybody after me because I need to rush a bit. You select it, and on the segments there, you'll change it to three. Yeah, there's a couple of different views in the attributes. Uh, yeah. So from here, we're going to, well, we should change the spacing first. So we've changed all our values. We're going to add a spacing. So we're going to select the super stack. Oops the stack that contains all the stacks. Um, and we're going to change the spacing from 0 to 15. And that's going to space it out a bit. Not very impressive, but it helps. Um, now comes the neat part. At least, I think so. But we're going to constrain it a bit. So in our super stack, when we have it selected, we're going to go back to this menu. Yes. Question? No question? So we're going to open our margins again. And this time, we're going to do something a little fancier. We're going to select the left, top, and right margins. And we're going to change them to 50, 20, and 50, and we're going to click add three constraints at the bottom. I'm not going to move on from here because I know you guys are working along. Um, so once we have this, we'll just click add three constraints. 
and it'll layer it out. So Xcode likes to show you what's going to happen before they change it a lot of the time. You can see that these lines are showing us what the margins are going to turn into. This is going to stretch out to fit the screen, and this is going to stretch out to the top a little bit. Now, I should mention that um, these are sort of pixel perfect. These have been pre-generated for us as well. So uh, when you're designing your own UX, you'll have to either design even UI, I'm sorry. Uh, you'll have to design either even more pragmatically through programming or um, just keep in mind that you should test on at least two generations back because um, an iPhone 4S probably can't run I uh, iOS 10. But I know there's somebody that's going to say, my iPhone 4S is iPhone 10, uh, iOS 10. Um, that's great. But <laughs> we can't develop for that. So now that we have this, I hope, are we good? We're going to right click, just as I mentioned earlier. These are our four stacks within our super stack. We're going to select our stacks inside the super stack and drag them up to the top on the super stack. So we're selecting the child and dragging it to the parent. So from here, we let go, and we're going to set it to equal width just like we did before. And as you can see, the stack that we set to be equal width changed. So we're going to set all three of these to the same width as the, the super stack by dragging it up and selecting the super stack and selecting equal widths. Now, that looks a lot prettier. So um, I will be plugging our Summer Academy uh, at the end of this. There are four different levels this year. Uh, Explorer, which is very beginner level. So for you, if you don't have any computer science background, the program will teach you how to program. And then it will get you to ship an app by the end of the eight-week course to the App Store that you can have people download, show your friends, use on a resume, that kind of thing. We also have intermediate, advanced, and expert, as well for people that are more farther along uh, on the iOS trail. And we do games and apps uh, uh, programs. And I will be teaching the games track here in New York this uh, summer. So if anybody wants to learn game development on the iOS platform, I will be one of your instructors. And I look forward to seeing you. So uh, are we good? Cool. So we've uh, constrained our, we've made our constraints, our rows, our segmented values. Now we're going to move on. I'm going to skip this section. This section you can go back to later. It tells you how to run it on your phone if you have an iPhone. But I'm going to skip it because I don't have an iPhone. And it's not a, nece a necessary part of this uh, workshop. So I'm going to go on. So. Here's where we get to the programming. And this is going to be, for a lot of you who've never seen something like this before, a little fun. Maybe not as fun as the, uh, the AR stuff going on next door, but you know, <laughs> useful. So um, we're going to need to make a little room. So we're going to close all of our views and just leave open the storyboard. And these two circles that you see at the top right, we're going to select this. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up the programming uh, text right next to it. So we'll have our uh, programming layout right next to our UI. And one of the interesting things about Xcode, now I haven't used Android Studio exclusively before anymore for a few seconds writing Hello World, admittedly. But I don't think that Android Studio does this. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the, t the text fields, right click, drag, and drag it into our code. So when we drag the text field into our code, it's going to create a code connection. Um, for computer science students, this is going to allow you to change the values and use the inputs. For your purposes, just understand that it's going to help us to interact with the user. 
So we're going to drag this in. And when we let go, it's going to ask us for a name. Do not name it yourself. Uh, please use our suggested names. Otherwise, the code that we're going to give you is going to break. The name for the first field is uh, bill amount field, lowercase b, a, capital A, capital F, bill amount field, connect. Make sure that it connects as a UI text field. If not, you accidentally dragged your view controller. <laughs> so make sure that it uh, connects as a text field. Next, oops. Next, we're going to drag the uh, segment. And we're going to call that the tip selector. Something you should know about programming is that when you name something, it's case sensitive. So tip selector with a capital S and tip selector with a lowercase s are two entirely different things. And that can break a lot of code. It's funny, but the amount of times that it happens is frustrating. <laughs> um, the third one. We're going to name uh, tip amount field in the same casing. Please make sure that you spell these correctly on the first try. If you have to delete it and drag it a second time, what you're going to end up doing is creating two code connections. Now, something that you should understand really quickly, you heard me use the word parent and child, right? Do you have any idea what that means? Don't be shy. All right, I'll briefly go over it. Uh, very briefly, because I don't know the backgrounds of the people watching, and I'm not actually even certain how many people are watching. Um, but in computer science, we have parent-child relationships, master-slave relationships, um, w amongst objects. So for you, for you in this example, we have the phone. Uh, just so that I understand. Uh, hi. Yes. Is there another one after this? OK, I'll wrap up then. I'm sorry. I was a bit behind. I can explain it to you afterwards. Um, let's just move on, because we're almost done. So we'll drag the fourth and final thing. We'll name it uh, total amount field. And then the button, drag it in, and we'll name it uh, calculate tip. All of this is in the tutorial. Uh, oops, I did something wrong there. Uh, when you drag the button in, you want to make sure that the connection is an action connection because you're going to be using the button. So make sure it's not outlet, make sure it's action. And that's going to be calculate tip. So when you say action, it's going to create a function for the, uh, for the button. So when you click on the button, it's going to run this function. Inside of this function, we already have the code and the logic written out for you, which I will go over briefly and with you afterwards. If you want, I can go over it a little bit more. Because um, this is the part that's really interesting for me as a teacher um, that I like to show. So you would copy and paste the code in, and I'll go over this really quickly. But um, once I get rid of my... Uh, my reference that I created. Uh, outlet. I'm sorry? What did I name it? Calculate tip. Yeah, it's right here. That's the name of the function that it's calling. So really quickly, for those of you to understand what's going on here in Swift, this is Swift. It's been a while of just using Xcode, but in Swift now we've got uh, if let, and in this giant state, uh, if statement is our functionality for the button, and then else. Let's are constants for in other languages. A constant variable is a variable that you cannot edit. And the reason that we're using this let is that we're just basically setting an equal to the, uh, uh, to the value in the text field. For those of you that are more advanced in computer science, you'll understand that what's going on here is we're casting the value from a string to a double meaning that whatever else they type in that field, we don't care about. If they type letters, we don't care about it. And actually, in the else, if it's not a double, this is just creating a constant, making sure that it is able to take the value of a double, 
uh, if it's not, then the uh, values reset themselves. Basically, if you type text in there, it resets. The rest of this will have a switch case on the segment, which one selected, and it'll calculate the amount that's typed in, multiplied by the tip amount, and then add it to the final string at the end. And for those of you that want a better explanation of this code, because I'm rushed a little bit, I can explain it uh, just here at the end of this uh, lecture. So yeah, and I will run it just to show you proof of concept, right? Later, uh, the parts of this that we missed were adding the logo and changing the color of the top, but that's pretty self-explanatory. If you go into the attributes, you find the background color and everything. So that's pretty much that. Um, here you can type a number and calculate it, and it'll, it should work just fine. Um, later in these attributes, because she walked away, is um, in these attributes, you should be able to uh, change so for these two, right now, we can put values in them, and we don't want that to happen. So in the, uh, an, in the state, we uncheck enabled for both of these, which is going to disable the ability for people to type things into them, meaning they're strictly for output. And for the one on the top, we can change the keyboard type to be a decimal pad uh, or a number pad just so that they can only, no, decimals, that's right. Just so they can only type numbers in and they can't type letters at all. And the reason that in our code we have the letter constraint anyway is just in case they found a way to get a letter in there, they copied and pasted something into there, um, we don't want them to break our code. So as a good software engineer, you should always be taking into consideration anything that can break your code. So thank you very much. At the Summer Academy uh, in New York City, you could learn more about this. You can learn how to develop on Swift. Uh, in a full eight-week program. Uh, you can talk to me afterwards if you're interested. The link to sign up with my uh, priority application is here. If you apply using my link, your application will be sent to the top of the uh, application list, and you will be viewed first. When I ask you where we met, just put space apps, and I'll be here tomorrow anyway during the hackathon, so thank you. <laughs> Sorry for going a little over. Yeah, I hope you I hope we're gonna Thank be you so much. Absolutely.